I think we've made it. Yay! We have. <laughs> we've made it to the summit, my dear. Let's go check out the views. So we are going to Devonport today, so we are going to be tagging on. Yes, we've loaded up our cards, our at hop or AT hop as they call it, because it is Auckland Transport Up. And the tickets go just on the little reader over here. So this will be interesting, right? Yes, this is only a 12 minute ferry ride from downtown to Devonport. It's only costing five dollars and a few cents. Was it like five twenty or something like that? And that is when you use the card. Well, we're on board and we have got the front seats. Actually, it's the back that was in it. Because we're be heading that direction, I would imagine. That may look like a cruise ship over there, but oh, it is. <laughs> I thought it was the Prince's Wharf, but it's the Coral Princess. We're having a rather smooth journey so far and as I said it's only going to take us 12 minutes. Look Paul, your first view of the North Shore. Oh this? Yeah. Well we're slowing down and the North Shore is just over here so Devonport is only one or two minutes away now. There's a lovely little beach over on that side next to the port. Well, I don't think I'm going to make the mistake of the other days. The sun is quite strong here, even if you don't think it is. So it's time to put this on. We have docked now and it's time to go. Don't forget to tie down. Yes, you mustn't forget to tie it off. Yes, you mustn't forget to tag off. Still a very strange expression, but there we go. Surely it should be <laughs> So we have landed onto Devonport Wharf and we are going to have a wee look around before going to Takapuna. That's the vessel that we just traveled on. Well, we've only just got off the boat and within a few minutes, it's on its way again back to Auckland downtown. Oh look, this is the 814 going to Takapuna. There is a row of shops here that I think we should also look around in. 
I do like a clock tower, especially when it's so early in the morning. Hiking is a big thing in New Zealand and you can do a coastal walk here along the North Shore. It says from Devonport to Long Bay is 23 kilometers, I think that is. There's something that I love about the coastline, especially the water hitting the side of the shore. It does give me a nice tranquil feeling and I just want to bottle it up and take it home with me. Just look at the beautiful aqua marine water. Everything just seems so pure here. The water, the air, the sky. Even if there's a few clouds, it's still lovely and bright. And look, we can also see the sky tower in that distance. You're never far away from a seagull or two. I'm not sure if that other one is a seagull. This one definitely is. Hello. You've got very nice feathers. Look at that. Look at the tail feathers. Really decorative. There's a very clean seagull. You often see dirty ones, but this is like, it's pure. It looks almost like a cuddly toy. Oh, really? What, right now? Well, it's only six something. It's six. So it's 6.30 in New York in the evening on Friday. And it's 10.30 in the morning here. Oh, hi, Jen. And we're filming as well. It's Saturday morning. It's 10.30. It's 10.30. Oh, 10.20 or something. 10.20. Okay, good morning. Oh my God. Good morning. Um, Look, I burnt my head already. <laughs> so, oh, my. so I'm wearing the hat. And, and I got a lot of sun because I didn't um, wear sunscreen one day. And then the lady was like, yeah, you need to wear sunscreen. The ozone layer is really, really thin here so there are like holes in it so the sun comes through and you're not as protected so, so over there is the main island uh, well the the city yeah so then that's the city over there where you see the sky tower jutting up and the skyscrapers <laughs> hi Hi! We have a new video! You've seen the new video? Thank you. Oh no, Hunter was saying bacon. Oh, we are. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're making one right now. <sighs> I'm just taking a moment to sit down and look at this absolutely spectacular beach. What do you think of this beach, Paul? It's quite good, and it's good that they have a toilet. There is no dryer, but the toilet is good. Well, your hands will air dry out here, I think. Just look over there at how nice it is. This is a very interesting beach because it's made up of two different types of surface. So you've got the shells and almost like a shingle like with lots of bits of seaweed and sort of bigger pebbles and stones There's throughout like it. There's also some wood cuttings and like branch, like broken branches that are really, really thin. Or there's like, um, yeah, bits and pieces of everything, including some bits of rock 
too, I guess. But then you just look over here to where the sea is, it's and sandy. I don't know if it's something to do with how the tide comes in, but then it just turns into like pure sand. So it is quite an interesting concept here, uh, quite an interesting mix. And of course, it's all created naturally. Let's take a look out at the sea and these sweeping waves. I think I ought to touch the water to feel what it's like. Now, you might think that it's freezing cold here because I'm wearing a jacket. I'm also actually wearing a sweatshirt. But it's about 16 Celsius, 61 Fahrenheit. And when the sun shines, it actually does feel warmer Warm. than that. But when you walk around, it can be slightly chilly. So that's why we're dressed like that. But I don't want you to think that it's freezing cold. But I am interested to know what temperature the water might be. So I don't want to get my feet wet. It also looks as though there could be quite a, a drop there <laughs> um, because where the water comes, it's so clear as well. You can actually see the ridges, but uh, ooh, it's coming in. Um, it's not freezing cold, but it's not warm either. I think if you were to like go out and walk in it, it would be brisk. Um, it would wake you up. It's just nice, but it's, it's not the sort of like, I wouldn't say look warm or anything like that, but the tide's definitely coming in. Someone's going in. They are. Well, he doesn't seem to mind, does he? And of course the other test is how salty is the water quite yeah there is some salt there I love the palm trees you see them everywhere around here in Auckland so charity shops in New Zealand are known as op shops really no, it doesn't actually say it on this store, but this is the Salvation Army charity shop. And for all intents and purposes, it would be classified as an up shop. So we're gonna just see if we can pick up any bargains in there. He's still in there, look. He wants to see absolutely everything that there is. He's looking at mugs. He's waving. Oh, he's put his hand up and saying, wait, wait. He's still looking. Well, looks like you bought something. I just got two cups for one pound each. One dollar each, I think you'll sorry, find. Sorry, one dollar each, sorry. Shall we have a little look or are they wrapped up? Oh no, that's okay, you don't need to bring it out. No, no, no. But there were little earthenware cups yeah. and like for coffee. Oh, very nice. Don't drop it now, put it back in. No, I won't. Well, I found that shop really interesting. There was um, quite a lot of men's clothes, like shirts. Unfortunately, none of them were my size. That is always a problem. And you saw this absolutely spectacular little jacket. But it was blazer. A bit, or blazer, but it was a bit small as well. I think it was like maybe one to two sizes smaller. But it's like an Aladdin's cave in there. They also sold stationery. There were cards, shoes, ornaments bits of everything really. Um, household items. Um, I saw a light bulb and also um, sewing and knitting accessories. So absolutely everything in there. Another one of these little areas that I absolutely love. You've got 
the awning with all the signs for the various shops along the way. And it's great because if it was raining, not today, today's a lovely sunny day, but if it was raining, you can do your shopping and stay dry at the same time. Oh, can I add something? At least this will also shelter you from the sunlight above. I can't pass up picking up a local paper or magazine. And this was free, the Devonport Flagstaff. And it says that it is delivered fortnightly to local homes. And it's full of local news and advertising. There's property in there, lots of pictures and everything as well. Help want the signs? <laughs> well, yeah, probably. And it's just a great little community magazine. There should be more of these, I think. Look at this, Paul. It says it's the post office, but I think it's a lot more than that. I'm not sure that they actually sell stamps anymore. There's a cafe over there. And it says here what they've got. They've got the So French Cafe. There's a Japanese seafood restaurant. And Apartment 10C. I wonder what that could be. Here are some of the stores and cafes along this lovely promenade. Hey, do you want to see a volcano? Maybe. There's this thing that is jutting upwards. Oh, yes. It is Mount Victoria, I believe. Don't write in if I'm wrong. Actually, do write it because I hope I'm right. So it is after these row of shops. And bars. This is the Patriot and yes. they have Guinness. This is one of the places that I found when I was doing my research. Just walking along, I've spotted this sign and I think this sums up New Zealand. The power of kindness lies in the softness with which it's spoken and the quietness with which it's done. Look at this cute family of doggies. They're very, very cool. Look, over here, the sheep. Look. <laughs> well, of course, there are five times more sheep than humans in New Zealand. Ah. Ah. We're going to try to visit Mount Victoria now, but after that, we will be taking the bus to Takapuna. And I absolutely love this bus stop map and timetable. You say timetable? Yes, I do. Because if you turn this around, the timetable is just there. So we want the 814 and we are here on Saturday at the present time. So it's probably gonna be after two o'clock when we go. So it's 18 and 48. In fact, it's 18 and 48 throughout the afternoon. So bear that in mind, Paul. Okay. Mount Victoria next. I don't know if I'm gonna make the summit to be quite honest. We are gonna give it a fair go. Well, yes. Let's see how far we get. The sun is out. I've got my hat on again, but we are underneath one of these awnings, awnings which you did say would come in handy if the sun was shining. I think so. And you're right. But we're just passing the Victoria oh. Theatre, which is an absolutely fabulous wait, looking wait, wait, building. Wait. Are you feeling under the weather right now because of the horrible rain? I know I am. Why not make yourself feel better by subscribing to our YouTube channel? It's Paul and Marcus. Just hit the subscribe button. You'll feel so much better. There's a fabulous view of the Auckland CBD from here. 
you can see the sky tower right in the middle of the picture. Oh, I'm out of breath already. And I've only walked up that little hill from the town of Devonport so far. But we're going the right way because here is the sign for Mount Victoria, Takarunga. Tiki or summit access. Oh gosh, this is going to be an uphill battle. Oh, it's definitely uphill. Right, I'm walking backwards. This is a little trick I learned when we were in Derry, London Derry, walking the walls. And I don't know what made me think of it, but I, I thought, why don't I just try walking backwards to see if it's easier to go uphill? And it worked. The only thing is, of course, you can't see what's behind you. Well, you can drive up here. Shall we try to hitch a lift? That would be good if we could. This lady in that car was wearing some sort of uniform. So I'm not sure if she's like an official of the mountain or what. But no lift was offered. So I'm afraid we have to go on foot, Paul. But I heard the views are stunning though. Nice little house. We've got a great view of Mission Bay where we went the other day. I can see the sphere of Bastion Point. It's like over there on top of that hill. And then, uh, yes, about there. And then that beach, just before that white building, that's Mission Bay down there. And another great view of Auckland from this point. Maybe I need to take my jacket off too, Paul. What do you think? But then I feel like I need to wear sunscreen on my... I'm wearing a jumper though. And I can't wear a t-shirt because people will see my stomach. This isn't a house at all. This is the Michael King Writers' Centre. Michael King was one of New Zealand's foremost biographers and historians before his tragic death at the peak of his career in 2004. Just in case you were wondering. Oh look, tennis courts. Yes, seats. Listen to the birds. What's it saying? Time to go. <laughs> it's saying it's a long way up. It is. And Marcus is never going to make it to the summit. Listen. Ooh, look at the yachts. There are steps up there and there's like a little, what looks like a viewing station. Do you think this is it, Paul? Do you think we're actually gonna make it? No, that might be it. That winding bit might be these steps. I think I can make it up here. I'm not going any further, but look, this looks as though it's the highest point. Watch your step. I'm doing my best, Paul. Oh. Can you believe that this used to be an active volcano thousands of years ago? Well, if I don't get to a toilet soon, it will be an active volcano again. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this over here. Oh wow, this is incredible. What a sculpture, right? Last set of steps. Whew. 
very bright up there. It is. It almost looks like the bridge of a ship up here. I think we've made it. Yay! We have. <laughs> we've made it to the summit, my dear. Let's go check out the views. Okay, so we are standing here. So I think oh, right the beach right in front of us is Cheltenham Beach. And then there's another island behind it called Montu, Montutapu. I don't know what that is, but uh -huh. maybe. Um, and I think Waiheek is that. Waiheeki. Yeah, it's like way beyond over there at some point i see but i did want to stand on a grassy mound while i was here because when we flew in i just thought the landscape was amazing and it looked like velvet so we're standing on some perfectly formed grass right now it's lush there are volcanoes everywhere you look there's one just over there. And then over here, we've got Mount Eden. Mm. I think being on top of the Mount Victoria gives you a really good idea of how tall this structure is. Because you could see a lot of these other landmarks very clearly. Do you see that road in the distance that is heading up? Yes. I think this will take us to Takapuna, which is near the beach over there. Oh, I see. This bit that is jutted in. Yes. So I think that that's Takapuna, if I'm not mistaken. Uh huh. From the map that I have looked up, and it should take about 20 25 minutes to get there. And the bus does run every once every half hour, so. Hey, we have never been on a volcano before. Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's kind of surreal actually to think that this was active at one point i think that the term they use is extinct well i hope so i hope so too otherwise we would be in real big trouble look at this toadstools everywhere does this remind you of our garden at home Oh yeah, it grows at the most weirdest times. They just pop up everywhere. Sometimes overnight. Ooh, lots of birds up here. Lots of chirping going on. It's quite a conversation. Should we listen in?
So the sign says Fort Victoria, 1885. Mount Victoria, 283 feet, 87 meters above sea level, the highest volcanic cone in Devonport, was fortified by the Maori long before the arrival of Europeans. What's this, Paul? Um, that, uh, Mount Victoria map. Oh, right. Well, this is the view that we came for. The CBD of Auckland behind us over my rather twisted and bent sore shoulder. <laughs> so at least it's going to be easier to get down because it's all downhill. And the next stop will be Takapuna. I smell something fishy. You're not subscribing to our show, but it's easy. Just hit the subscribe button. It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Well, we've just taken that bus from Devonport to Takapuna. So we're going to have a look around and see what is here. It's quite a lot of shops. You've got a Barker's, a Metro supermarket. Aha, uh -huh. maybe we should go in there for some more chocolate bars. Whitaker's anyone? Yes. And I also saw that there was a farmer's. So I think this is like one of the shopping centers. In fact, it is called Shore City. Oh wait, Country Road. I went in there. It is an Australian, so, so it's like a, it's like an Australian brand. And look, Farmers is right here. Look at this, a celebration of Auckland and its culture, Takapuna exhibition. developing a new town square. It says exciting new developments coming to Takapuna. This is a post box. So you've got one for standard mail and one for international. And next to it, you've got a phone box, which is operated by Spark, which is one of the big mobile phone companies and telecoms companies in New Zealand. You will also find these litter and recycling bins dotted throughout the city and wider areas. Well, I like the look of this sculpture. Is it a shark? It's fins of some sort. Fins rather than wings. Indeed, it says that this sculpture was part of the Wheel Tail Art Trail 2022 supporting the World Wildlife Fund. No shortage of places to eat along the drag here. And it's beautiful. Look at all the palm trees. Places to sit as well. This is a navigation owl by Justine Oti. It's inspired by Auckland's ongoing relationship with this coastline and harbour, Justine's design 
draws on nautical and navigational imagery as a graphic representation of the city of Sales. Takapuna Beach. I have to say, this is the busiest beach that we have been to since we've been here, although there's a caveat with that. It is Saturday, so everyone's out and the weather is gorgeous. Do you think we shouldn't have come on a Saturday? But well, you have to come. Have you, come you have to come when you come. Mind the step. Oh. So just to tell you what type of sand it is, it's a slightly coarser sand than we've seen before. It's still soft. It's soft. There are some rocks and branches, shingle and seaweed. Did you say shingle? Yes, I did. Oh and that goodness. is the volcano. You know the name of it. Is it Ragatori or something? Rangatoto. Rangatoto over here, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not every day that you can say you have been to the beach and you're looking out at a volcano. Yes, that's very bizarre. Oh my God. I can smell the seaweed and it's very pungent because I think that it's very fresh. So it is very clean as well and very, very blue. Just as it was at Devonport, you can see where the shingly, shelly bit turns more into normal sand. There's like a dividing line just here. And I guess, as I said earlier, it's probably something to do with the tide. You should visit Takapuna if you are on the North Shore. And I would say it is very family friendly, as you can see from the people who are visiting here today. So from Takapuna and Devonport, that's the end of this episode, but we will see you next time. In the meantime, I need to say something special. Thank you for watching our lovely episode today. If you liked anything, please hit the like, also comment, and especially we wouldn't mind a subscribe if you haven't done so already. So thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Look, there's people actually out there in the water. Where? Oh. Over there, look! Oh, I didn't see that. Wow. Oh, you're gonna miss this.